السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all And to accept from us the prayer that we have just rendered and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who receive a complete reward for every letter that we have heard being pronounced from his word, the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can be accepted in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Ameen. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, it is indeed a very very fortunate moment from amongst the moments of this particular month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of mercy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can take heed. For these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening we have a very intense topic. A topic that is of utmost importance. As-salatu imadu al-deen. Faman aqamaha faqad aqama al-deen. Wa man hadamaha faqad hadama al-deen. Salah is one of the main pillars or the main pillar that upholds and uplifts the deen. Whoever holds it up will hold their deen. Whoever has discarded it has destroyed their deen. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us firstly to read our salah, to fulfill our prayers, the five daily prayers that we are speaking about. The salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in many places in the Quran. Listen to what he says in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish your salah and give your zakah and find yourselves bowing with those who are bowing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us with what is known as jama'atul muslimin, with those who are the congregation of the muslimin. And we ask Allah to grant us steadfastness. That is the first point, the command of salah. This verse is repeated so many times in the Quran in many, many different places. Then we have the second issue that is discussed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in no order or sequence, but we are making mention of the points. Allah makes mention of the fact that your salah must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must not associate partners when it comes to salah. We never ever render any act of worship for anyone besides Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Definitely the places of prostration belong to Allah alone. So never ever call out or render any act of worship to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us steadfastness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, and we repeated this verse a few days back, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah says, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death is all for the sake of Allah. No partner does he have. And I am from amongst the first who have surrendered. May Allah make us from those who have surrendered as well. Amin. The third issue discussed regarding salah in this Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who fulfill their salah properly. And Allah praises them from the very beginning in Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, He calls them Al-Muttaqoon. He calls them those who are conscious of Him. Because in order to fulfill your salah, you need to have iman and belief in the unseen. No one would fulfill salah if they did not believe in the unseen. Allah says, this Qur'an is a means of guidance for those who are conscious of their Rabb. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who believe in the unseen and who establish their salah and spend from what Allah has granted them. Look at how Allah praises them. He calls them the rightly guided. And there are many such verses. I am only 
I am only putting forth one or two verses from every angle that the Quran has discussed the subject of salah. Because if we were to mention all the verses, we would be here all night. And then subhanallah, we would find tomorrow everybody would be telling me, now we have more Abdul clocks that we spoke about yesterday. May Allah protect us. I think that term, everybody has memorized the term. Every time I see people, they tell me, look, I'm not from amongst those who worship the clock. Allah protect us all inshallah. Then the next issue discussed by the Quran is the issue of the Qibla. Very important. We want to read our salah. Allah has praised those who read their salah. Now let's talk about where to face. Remember, we do not worship the black box known as the Kaaba. We don't worship it at all. The only thing we use it for is direction for salah. And we hold it in, in a high esteem and in very high regard Islamically and spiritually because we all face that direction. And it is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we respect it, but we don't worship it. Some people spread a rumor, the non-Muslims. And they say, you see these Muslims, they worship idols. And they worship this uh, black, black box that they have left there in Mecca. No, we only use it for direction. So Allah says, many times in the Quran, at least three times in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَوَلِّ وَجَهَكَ شَطُرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ So face your face in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Hence, we are all facing that direction. Now, I'd like you to just think of a certain miracle that occurs every single day. When Adhan is called and all of us are standing for Salah, just picture the Kaaba in the center. There are safs that are made around the Kaaba. Correct? Yes, they are. Then the bigger circle in Mecca, everyone who's facing is facing the Kaaba. The bigger circle outside in the Middle East, whoever's facing is facing the Kaaba. The bigger circle on the globe, whoever is facing is facing the Kaaba. Subhanallah, everybody is facing that direction at once, praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes the timing is a little bit different here and there. But imagine those sufuf, if we did not have walls and if we did not have distances, it would be miraculous to watch billions of people actually prostrate for the sake of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. All praise is due to Allah. We are fortunate to be from that ummah. Now this direction is there so that no problems are caused. Because what would happen is a rich man would say, no, let's build a place of prostration facing my house. The other man would say, no, my business has a big turnover. Let's face my business. The other one would say, no, I've got a very pretty wife. So let's build a, a masjid facing her house. May Allah protect us all. May Allah grant us happiness. In order to resolve the problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will face this direction. That's it. Then, because some people thought that that direction is what we worship, Allah clears that in Surah Al-Baqarah. And He says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ The verse is a long verse. Allah says, Do not think for a moment that righteousness is in the direction you are facing. No! Righteousness is not in facing the, the east or the west. Righteousness is the one who believes in Allah, the one who believes in the messenger, who does good deeds, who establishes the salah. Which means, it is more important to establish your salah than the direction. Though the direction is also important. What is of greater importance is the establishing of the salah. And this comes to play when a person is confused about the qibla. The ruling of the sharia says, just try and then you face. So if I've tried, for example, and I faced the wrong direction, but after a trial, my salah is accepted because the fulfillment of that salah is far greater than the direction you are meant to be facing. But if someone faces the wrong direction intentionally, then their salah will not be valid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then the next issue, now we know where the qibla is. What should I do? I need to purify myself, cleanse myself. The Quran tackles that angle also. Subhanallah. The Quran speaks about tahara. And the Quran tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاوْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقُ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ 
Allah is teaching us how to make wudu. Oh you who believe, when you want to read salah, arrive at a level of purity and a level of cleanliness that will make you pure, pure enough to read salah, pure enough to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what should you do? Wash your faces, wash your hands up to the elbows, wipe your head and wash your feet. Allahu Akbar. Now, sometimes we all know that when a person breaks wind, he does not or she does not wash the place where that happened from, but he or she would make wudu. So sometimes people say that doesn't make sense. No, it does. It makes sense. It is a spiritual cleansing over and above a physical cleansing. It is a spiritual cleansing which keeps away the devil and shaitan. A person who remains in the condition of wudu 24-7 or tries to at least remain for as long as possible in the condition of wudu shall be protected even from the devil and shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also clarifies the issue that you know some people might think we are clean, we are smart. Take a look at the non-Muslims. They might appear to be very smart and very prim and prop. Only Allah knows how clean they are. Because they don't know sometimes that they are unclean. May Allah protect us. But with us, we need to arrive at a certain level of purity and cleanliness. Everyone must wash their feet. No one can say, mine are quite clean. Because then who's going to be the judge? When there's someone smelly and stinky in the masjid, and all of us are being affected by the man standing next to us, then he might think he's clean. But Allah says, no, if everyone washes their feet, and everyone washes their hands, then nobody will be unclean, and nobody will disturb the others in salah. And this is why it is important, we should not come to the masjid with different smells, which are offensive, like the smell of onion, the smell of garlic. The hadith says, wash your mouth properly, before you come to the masjid. Even if you smoke, there might not be a hadith about smoking, but but I think it's worse than garlic and it's worse than onion. May Allah protect us all. Then we have another issue regarding salah. What did I say moments ago? Make sure you are fit enough to come to the masjid. Allah speaks about tahara. Then Allah says, you must wear your best clothes when you want to read salah. When you want to fulfill salah, when you are coming to the masjid, wear clothes that are the best. Not in order to show off to people, but to show off to your creator. To say, Ya Allah, you gave me good clothing. I'm wearing this, mashallah, good abaya. And mashallah, I'm wearing such a, such a nice piece of clothing that will please my own creator. And this is why it is makruh for us to pitch up at the masjid with our pyjamas. May Allah protect us. Early morning we come and we are wearing something that we were sleeping with. It's makru. Your salah will be valid inshallah. But take pride in the houses of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, Ya bani Adam khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O oh, children of Adam. O oh, children of Adam. Adorn yourselves with beautiful clothing when you are going to the places of worship, wherever you are going to put yourselves and meaning your heads down for prostration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The term masjid refers to the place of sujood. So that place of sujood can either be a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it can be anywhere else that you are actually reading your salah. At the time of fulfilling your salah, dress properly with proper good clothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Also, it is wrong for us to come with clothing that has adverts on because we will be distracting others. Imagine you are in salah and someone has a, a t-shirt at the back. It is advertising the bargain that spa. So now it says spa, the big bargains, and the man can't wait to finish to get those bargains. So we are disturbing people. We should try not to have writing on our t-shirts and not to have pictures and so on. All that is against the etiquettes of salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. Then after we have dressed properly and we are ready to go to the masjid, what happens? Look at the angles from which the Quran has discussed the issue of salah. Allah says there is something known as nida. Nida meaning the adhan that is called out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in a few places in the Quran. One of them is when it comes to Jumu'ah. Allah says in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ Referring to the adhan. When the adhan is called out for Jumu'ah. That means there is an adhan for salah mentioned in the Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that the disbelievers will laugh at us whenever we call our adhan and whenever we come for salah. There is a possibility. There are certain categories of disbelievers who will scoff and laugh and make a joke of it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When you hear that, you find some of the disbelievers getting upset. They get upset. 
And they start joking and mocking and they come and try and block it and stop it and this is disturbing us and that. Whereas when there is loud full blast music on a Saturday evening disturbing us until Sunday morning, then nobody complains. May Allah protect us all. But whenever we have you will find that is the call to success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there will be people who don't want the success and there will be others who will come and block you. So listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah says, وَإِذَا نَادَيْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ اتَّخَذُوهَا هُزُوًا وَلَعِبًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Whenever you call out for salah, they, the group of people, will scoff and make a joke out of it because they don't have understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can understand the call for success. If you want to achieve success, we need to come for salah. The Quran has discussed that angle as well. We will get to it inshallah. Then the number of salawat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how it is spaced out. Tonight we heard a verse. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Allah says we have prescribed salah upon the believers on fixed times. So it's not my time or yours. Fixed times for many, many reasons. We don't have the time to go into those reasons tonight. But if Allah gives us the life and the memory, one day we will go into the details of the timings of salah and how beneficial they are to uniform and govern our entire lives. May Allah grant us inshallah uniformity and success. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the salawat again in Surah Hud. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ Allah says, establish your salah on both sides of the day and part of the night. So early morning, we find ourselves in salah. In the evenings, we find ourselves in salah. Midday, in salah. And at night, in salah. Subhanallah. These are the timings of salah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how salah will automatically wipe out your sins. The same verse I read moments ago continues. <laughs> Definitely your good deeds will automatically wipe out your bad deeds. This is why when you come for salah automatically, if you have the right intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you a spiritually elevated person. Don't we feel spiritually empowered after we come for salah, especially in the month of Ramadan, especially Qiyamul Layl. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us spiritual upliftment at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in many places in the Quran. In fact, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Jewish people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the people of Musa alayhi salam that if they establish their salah, then he would forgive their sins. Listen to what he says. لَإِنْ أَقَمْتُمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَيْتُمُ الزَّكَاةَ وَآمَنْتُمْ بِرُسُلِي وَعَزَّرْتُمُوهُمْ وَأَقْرَضْتُمُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا لَأُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَلَأُدْخِلَنَّكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Allah tells them, if you do this and do that and do that, and part of it is if you establish your salah, I will expiate your sins, I will forgive your sins, I will replace your sins with good deeds, and I will grant you jannah in return. If that could apply to them, it applies to us as well. Allahu Akbar. Allah will grant us Jannah if we establish Salah, believe in Allah, believe in the messengers, believe in the books, and we do good deeds, inshallah, we will be having Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the laziness and the fact that hypocrites are the ones who are lazy in Salah. We read the verses tonight, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَا يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا There are certain people when they stand up for salah, they stand very lazily and they only want to show the people that we were standing for salah. We were standing for salah, but they don't really think of Allah much. They don't even remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a little. In another surah, 
Surah Al-Ma'un, we all know it off by heart inshallah. Allah says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Destruction be upon those who read their salah lazily, those who are not very interested in the proper timings of salah, those who leave their salah until the last minute and then they want to rush, those who let the time of the salah lapse and then they say, oh, I wanted to read that salah. And they continue doing that on a regular basis. Allah says, destruction be upon them. الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ Those who are doing so in order to show others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of protection. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that salah itself will help Salah itself will help our other deeds be accepted if we fulfill salah properly. And if we fulfill salah lazily, this is a shocking verse, if we fulfill salah lazily, there is a possibility that even our zakah will not be accepted. If we fulfill our salah lazily, there is a possibility that even our zakah will not be accepted. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah. Regarding certain people whose, whose zakah was not accepted. Allah says, وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالًا وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ Allah says, What is it that resulted in their sadaqat not being accepted besides the fact that whenever they used to read salah, they were very, very lazy. They were very, very lazy. So Allah says, why must we accept their zakah? They don't want to do that. You know the hadith of uh, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he says, Wallahi la'uqatilanna man farraqa bayna salati wa zakah. Wallahi, I will go out to fight those who have differentiated between salah and zakah. They are two fara'id, they are mentioned together. When it comes to the pillars of Islam, they are mentioned together in the Qur'an in many many places. Salah and zakah, I'm sure we all know that. So this is why Allah says, you don't want to establish your salah, you might give out your zakah and fulfill your farad, but you won't achieve a reward for it. It might be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to any one of us. The next point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you should fulfill your salah properly. You must fulfill your salah according to the times and according to the size of the salah. But if you are on journey, then you may decide to now cut your salah. According to some of the madhahib, you must cut. And according to the other madhahib, you may decide to cut your salah. Allah mentions it in the Quran. So no one must have an excuse, I was on journey. Well, Allah gave you a discount, subhanallah. 50% discount in most cases. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah says, and if you are sick also, no problem. If you can't stand, you must sit down. If you can't sit, you must lie down. Subhanallah. So no one can say, I can't read my salah, I was sick. Allah gave you a discount, a different type of a discount. Allahu Akbar. Then at times of war and at times of fear, Allah says, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ فَرِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا Allah says, so if you are fearing and if you are in a condition of war, then you can either read salah whilst you are standing or whilst you are riding. No problem. On your feet or on your on the backs of your horses, meaning on your mode of transport. And today, mashallah, we read salah even on the plane, mashallah. And we read salah, subhanallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these modes of transport. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. He has permitted it. Because at times what happens is, we have no other choice but to read our salah on the aircraft. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us all these leeways in the Qur'an. And these are verses that are mentioned, subhana rabbi al-a'la. In fact, a verse we read tonight regarding salah of fear. Allah says, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَقْصُرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنْ خِفْتُمْ Allah says, if you are fearing, whilst you are traveling on the earth, and you are in fear because of war, Allah says no problem in changing the the type of salah you read. And then Allah describes that salah in the verses later. This verse, some of the ulama say it is referring to salah on a journey. And others say it is referring to salatul khawf, which means the salah at times of war. Because it is a different type of a salah. At times of war, for your information, the sufuf are all there. One line goes in sajda while the other one is standing and watching. Then when that one comes up from sajda, this one goes down. Amazing. You know Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu, 
he was with the enemies at one stage and he said, we will whack these people when they are in sujood. And that is when Salatul Khawf was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was shocked. Because he knew Salah to be everyone going out in sijda. So when everyone is going down in sijda, what happens is that the kuffar would be able to attack all of them one time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that juncture revealed a different type of salah. Amazing, look at the miracle. So Khalid ibn, ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu later on when he became a Muslim, he said, I knew this was right. Because imagine even my ideas, Allah knew them. Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses. So that is a different type of a salah. Now let's look at the plan of shaitan. What is shaitan's plan? Does shaitan want me to read salah? No. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And we need to realize the plan of shaitan. Allah says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَن يُوقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنِ الصَّلَاةِ Shaytan's idea is to create enmity between you through drinking and through gambling. A person is drunk, enmity is created. That's not our subject today. But a person gambles as well, enmity is created. And what happens? A person who is like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they fall into shaytan's trap. Shaytan's trap involves two things. Firstly, to make you forget Allah, that Allah even exists. Shaytan wants you to become oblivious of the remembrance of Allah in totality. Then the second thing is shaytan wants to divert you from salah as well. This is why when we come to the masjid, shaytan will make us feel hot. Then shaytan will say, this fan is blowing straight on me. Then shaytan will say, the light is too much. Then shaytan will say, the sound is too loud. MashaAllah, may Allah reward the brother Muhammad who is responsible for the sound, beautiful sound. It's keeping us awake, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And we ask Allah to reward him and all those who have made this a success, inshaAllah. So, the reality is we must not complain because that's shaitan's plan. What did I tell you? We spoke about it in depth. Shaitan's plan is to turn us away from salah. From the very beginning, he'll tell you, no, you're late. Now just don't go. Because now you're late, you're going to arrive there and look like a fool getting into the masjid when everyone is getting out. And this is why sometimes you have people who are quite mischievous when they are coming out of the masjid for Salatul Isha and they notice late comers. They tell them, brother, you are early for Fajr, brother. Wallahi, that is actually a comment that is very cutting. No, they came late, so what? At least they didn't fall prey to shaitan. But if you are coming late every single day, there's a big problem. Let me tell you what happens. It's not correct for us to turn around and watch the faces of those who've come late. But if you were to do that, and if it was allowed, very sadly, the same people are late every single day. Amazing. If that's the case, then surely we need to start making a little bit of progress by coming early and let's leave whatever is trying to hinder us to come to the masjid and the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't want to fall prey to shaitan. The next issue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, He says, He discusses who is the one who is going to be steadfast on salah. And in Surah Al-An'am, Allah says, it is only those who believe in Allah and in the last day and who believe in the Qur'an. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَهُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ It is those who believe in the last day, who believe in the messenger, who believe in the Qur'an, who are then uh, steadfast with their salah and they establish their salah properly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that if you have disbelievers who might have fought you, who are your enemies, they become your brothers instantly. By doing what? By declaring the shahada, establishing salah and giving zakah. So Allah says, فَإِن تَابُوا And this verse is in Surah At-Tawbah. فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينَ If they repent and they establish salah and they give zakah, they automatically become your brothers in deen. Instantly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us love for all those who establish salah. And may He make us from amongst them inshaAllah. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the oppression of the one who wants to stop the use of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that will enhance the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا Can there be anyone more oppressive than the one who is blocking Islamic activity from the masjid, from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, activity that will enhance the remembrance of Allah, whether it is salah, whether it is a lecture, no matter what it is, whether it is a tafsir, whether it is an explanation of hadith, those who block that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning them, because the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are there to increase the spirituality of an individual, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightens them, with Abu Jahl. What did Abu Jahl do? He was one of the enemies of Islam. And in Surah, in Surah Al-Alaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about him. Do you see the one who is blocking the worshipper when he's trying to read Salah? That was Abu Jahl. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was trying to read Salah, Abu Jahl came and tried to beat him and block him and stop him. And Allah says, Nay, this is the house of Allah. You can't do that. Allah will curse you if you do that. May Allah protect myself and yourselves. And this is why it is very important for those whom Allah has put in authority within the masajid to understand that they must use the masjid for Islamic activity. Proper Islamic activity that will benefit the Muslim ummah because it will either be for them or against them on the day of Qiyamah that you were placed in charge of the masajid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did you utilize that house of Allah? Did you make it your own house? According to your whims and fancies or according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did you utilize the masjid to its full capacity? Did the people of the community benefit from that masjid in the full capacity? Or did your rules and regulations result in people running away from the masjid? If that's the case, you will be caught by the neck on the day of Qiyamah and thrown into the fire of Jahannam because Allah says there can be no one more oppressive than such a person. Allahu Akbar. This is why it is so dangerous to be on the mosque of a, to be on the committee of a mosque when i say dangerous i mean it is a huge responsibility and only those who have deep knowledge of this deen will understand the responsibility that there is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on your shoulders to be on a committee that is running a masjid may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors for every single one of us that having been said it is a great reward as well to be on the same committee if you are fit for it and to be fit for it you need to have islamic knowledge you need to be directly under the guidance of ulama if you are making your own decisions you are wrong even if you happen to be slightly in conformance with what allah has said but if you have no knowledge and you are making rulings and regulations for the house of allah you are wrong may allah protect us it's like a plumber making decisions for a doctor i think this example was given so many times he will decide to put a copper pipe when there is a heart problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And he will still think he is solving the problem. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how to achieve assistance through salah. In Surah Al-Baqarah Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu istainu istainu bis sabri wa salah. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ O oh, you who believe, seek assistance in your whole life. Seek assistance for all your affairs through establishing salah and bearing patience. And definitely it is not easy to establish salah except for those who are humble and have humility for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you want assistance in your life, you need to establish salah. Let's take a look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter. Allah says, we need to also keep a portion of salah that we will read in our homes. Not only in the houses of Allah, but, but as well as the houses we need to liven them up. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Yunus to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ وَأَخِيهِ أَن تَبَوَّآ لِقَوْمِكُمَا بِمِصْرَ بُيُوتًا وَجَعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبْلَةً وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing Musa and his brother Harun alayhim as-salam to provide houses and dwellings for the people, for his people within Egypt when they shifted to Egypt. And Allah says, and 
take, make your houses also places of worship, which means keep a portion of your salah that you will read in your houses. It is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to read farad in the masjid and to read the sunnah and the nafil at your house. Amazing. So your children can watch that you're reading salah and they can also grow up with that as well as the surroundings of your house can be blessed with the prayer that you are praying in the house. So to make your farad in the masjid and your sunnah and nafil at home is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But what we should understand is if out of laziness we're going to go home and forget about it, then we'd rather read it in the masjid and I think that is the case with the bulk of us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand and to put into practice. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about sujood, sajda in the Qur'an. There are many verses in the Qur'an where sajda is mentioned, where prostration is mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided these verses into three. We are instructed to make sajda at those times. What are these times? When Allah tells us, O you who believe, make a sajda. Prostrate for my sake, we immediately fall prostrate. Then the other types of verses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how people in the past and how other creatures have prostrated to Allah, we declare that we are creatures and we immediately prostrate. Then Allah tells us how some people rejected to prostrate when they were commanded to prostrate out of arrogance, like Fir'aun and those people, then we immediately prostrate in order to subtract us and to take us out of that equation of arrogance. So that we can be from amongst those who are fulfilling the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we abide by it. So these are known as verses of sajda. They are also included when when we discuss the issue of prayer that is mentioned in the Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the sin that there is for leaving salah. The sin that there, there is for leaving salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that as well as the fact that when someone has read their salah, Immediately after salah, they engage in a sin that is a far more dangerous sin. Why? Because you've just come out, you've just plugged out from communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to start lying, you want to start cheating and deceiving. Allahu Akbar, may Allah protect us. This is why as true Muslims, if someone wants us to be completely honest, we are meant to be honest at all times, but straight after doing a good deed, we should be even more honest. May Allah protect us all and grant us understanding. Whilst we are fasting, we lie. What's the point of fasting? Immediately on opening our fast, we cheat, we steal, we commit sin. What was the point of fasting? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this issue in Surah Al-Ma'idah regarding certain people who had to bear witness. Allah says, تَحْبِسُونَهُمَا مِن بَعْدِ الصَّلَاةِ You must hold them back after salah. And then you ask them the questions. Then another point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about is the reward of salah. Now, my dearest listeners, let me inform you that the reward of salah is firstly in the dunya and then in the akhirah. You want to see your life change, I promise you it will change. Just establish your salah. You read your five salah without being lazy. When you cross the first 40 days, you will notice your life's doors of goodness opening, subhanallah. And believe me, that's a guarantee. Some people think that, no, I've read my salah for three days now. I've read five salah a day. You were supposed to have done that your whole life. You're not going to see results in three days. Some tablets, you have a course of it which takes two months, three months. You can't just have two tablets and say, but I'm not yet better. Allahu Akbar. So the same applies with salah. If Allah wants, He can show you the benefit immediately. But what would happen is, fulfill your five salah, have an intention to continue doing that for the rest of your life, then see what happens. I guarantee you, Every single problem of yours will be resolved because it will draw you closer to Allah. One of the points that is discussed in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salah itself will prohibit you from evil deeds and immorality if you fulfill it properly. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut. أُتْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Read what Allah has revealed to you in terms of the book, the Qur'an, and establish your salah. For indeed, salah will prohibit you from immorality and evil. That is a study on its own. That is a subject on its own and a topic on its own. How salah protects a human being from evil and immorality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us protected at all times. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the reward of salah in the akhirah. And he says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whatever you have forwarded for the sake of yourselves, whatever you yourselves have forwarded, obviously for the sake of Allah, but for your own benefit. You have forwarded it for your own benefit. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will keep that reward for you and you will see it. The dunya as well as the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast. Then, very beautifully, salah is actually an act of worship that will reduce our stress levels. The Quran speaks about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in Surah Al-Hijr regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدَرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that whatever they are saying, they are spreading rumors about you, that you are a womanizer, you are behind money, you are after uh, control, you are after power and so on. All those rumors that they are spreading about you, we know that they are causing your chest to be narrowed. Which means, you know, you are concerned about them, it's stressing you up. So what you do, praise Allah and find yourself in, this, in the condition of prostration a lot. Be from those who prostrate. Now, prostration, if you are in that position, it is the only position where the brain is lower than the heart. Subhanallah. So the blood that is pumping to the brain is effortless. It will help a person whose cholesterol is high when you are in the condition of sujood. Because naturally there is no effort when the oxygenated blood is being pumped into the brain. Amazing. And this is why it is said that sujood will help relieve your stress. Just sujood itself. Even just the position of sujood, subhanallah. And we find it a burden to go and make sujood. Allahu Akbar. That position of prostration is a sacred position. It is only to be rendered for the one who created me and you. It is haram and prohibited to render that position for anyone else, any creature that Allah has created, no matter who it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding and protection. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning how... It is actually a point of release of stress. Salah is also a point of mercy. Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ After speaking about salah, He says, fulfill your salah so that you can be from amongst those who is, who, whom Allah has mercy on. So that you can have mercy on yourself. So if you want mercy, you need to fulfill your salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us fulfillment of the salah. You want success? Didn't we say moments ago, Hayya ala al-falah means come to success. Allah says in the opening verses of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Successful are the believers who concentrate in their salah. So they read their salah, but now what is discussed is not the quantity, but the quality. So you want success? Improve the quality of your salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best, inshallah, of this dunya as well as the akhirah. Look at how powerfully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about success and the fact that success is definitely connected to the quality of the salah that we read. In fact, in, Luk- in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those who establish their salah are the ones who are rightly guided and those who establish salah are the ones who are successful in every single way. Success is not measured by how much wealth you have but is measured by your contentment. If Allah has kept you happy with whatever He has granted you, you must know you are successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Then there is something amazing. Allah says, do not let your wealth and do not let your children distract you from salah. This verse is repeated more than once in the Quran. The distraction from salah. Allah praises certain people in Surah An-Nur. Allah says, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ Those men whom Allah is praising, Allah says, 
nothing distracts them from their salah and their zakah. Neither business nor a good deal will distract them from their salah and their zakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever distract us from our salah. Another verse also Allah says in Surah Al-Munafiqun, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, لا تلهكم أموالكم ولا أولادكم عن ذكر الله Or you who believe, do not allow your wealth and your children to distract you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's take heed inshallah. Then there is something beautiful. When you fulfill your salah properly, Allah will show it to others on your face. Amazing. You will have a sign on your face. And in order for someone to see it on your face, they will need to be pious as well. Sometimes with us, and I've said this many times, I need to repeat it, we look at someone fair in complexion and we say, MashaAllah, so much noor. Not realizing that noor has got nothing to do with your complexion. You can be as dark as charcoal, but you can have a lot of noor. Subhanallah. It's noor is something totally different. It is a shine that Allah puts on your face. سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ Allah says, there will be signs on their faces from the marks of sujood. The sajda will leave on their faces a different type of a shine. Some people think that when you've got a little spot on your forehead, then that is a sign of sujood. You know, that's not correct. Not necessarily. But the shine on your face will give away your piety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to distinguish between those who are close to Him and those who are far, so that we can become close to those who are close to Him. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amali yuqarribuna ila hubbik. Oh Allah, we ask you to love us. We ask you for your love and we ask you the love of those who love you and whom you love. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Another very interesting point is, not only should we be fulfilling our farad salah, but even at night, we should be reading nafila and tahajjud. Allah speaks about it, and Allah says it in Surah Al-Isra, as well as Surah Muzzammil. Allah says, in Surah Al-Isra, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَن يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا At night, you should engage in that salah as a voluntary prayer for the sake of Allah, so that He can grant you that lofty rank that He has promised you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day of Qiyamah. Subhanallah. So we also want a lofty rank, don't we? Let's, let's also stand up in tahajjud. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand up until his feet were swollen. Allahu Akbar. Yet, he is the first to enter Jannah. Allahu Akbar kabira. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the salah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Muzzammil. And Allah says, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Firstly, He instructs him to say, stand up at night. Stand up all night, except just a little. Then Allah says, إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ تَقُومُ أَدْنَى مِن ثُلُثَيِ اللَّيْلِ وَنِصْفَهُ وَثُلُثَهُ وَطَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الَّذِينَ مَعَكَ Allah is describing the salah of the messenger and some of the companions. That they used to stand in salah every single night, not only in Ramadan. For most of the night, subhanallah, they used to stand in salah with us. I think sometimes we find it difficult even in the month of Ramadan for two hours. For sometimes maximum of three hours to come to the masjid, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What beats me is if you go to the churches around us, you will find that at times they spend hours on end on a weekly basis, sometimes two, three times a week. And they continue in their acts of worship until late at night. Yet they are in dalal. They are in clear misguidance. If only they had the Qur'an. Wallahi, they would remain in the masajid forever and ever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us guidance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the punishment of those who leave their salah. I've mentioned that, but let's read the verse in Surah Maryam. Allah says, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا Allah says, there came after those messengers, a group of people who left their salah, and they turned away. So Allah says, they will be thrown into destruction. May Allah not throw us into destruction. Sometimes we've got problems in our lives. Probably we've forgotten our own Creator. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let that happen to us. Then a few more points. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the people in Jahannam. The fact that those from Jannah will ask those from Jahannam, why did you go to Jahannam? What made you go to Jahannam? Do you know what the people will say? Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Muddathir. عَنِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ the, the, the people of Jannah will ask the mujrims and the criminals, what is it that drove you to Saqar? Saqar is a level of Jahannam, a very dangerous level of Jahannam. So they will say, لَمْ نَكُمِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We did not used to read our salah. وَلَمْ نَكُنُ طُعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we never used to give out our charities to the poor. So now we are in Jahannam. Imagine Allah is describing the discussion, telling you that they will be asked what drove you to Jahannam, and the issue they will mention is we didn't used to read our salah. I think that is enough for all of us to start establishing our salah, because we believe that there is Jannah and Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked not only us, but even the messengers to instruct our family members to read salah. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other messengers and the lesson is for all of us. At the end of surah Taha, Allah is saying, command and instruct your family members to establish salah. How many of us can command and instruct our family members to read salah? When it comes to an outing to the school, prize giving and this, and they have a play in the evening, we are quick to take them to the school. And we are quick to spend a night out with them and many nights out with them for a play and for a school function. When it comes to the function of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't even bring them to the masajid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us away from hypocrisy. May He make us powerful Muslims inshaAllah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the same point. Luqman alayhi salam called his son. Allah loved the way he did it so much that Allah mentions it in a whole surah known as surah Luqman. He speaks so beautifully to his son. He says, Ya bunayya, oh my beautiful son, aqimi salata, establish your prayer. I can't explain it to you more. Luqman alayhi salam tells his son. I think the lesson is for all of us as well. Ismail alayhi salam used to tell his family members to establish salah. That Allah loved it so much, he mentions it also in Surah Maryam. And Allah praises Ismail alayhi salam. وَكَانَ يَأْمُرُ أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ He used to always encourage and, and instruct his family members to establish salah and to give out zakah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how amazingly it is our duty to make dua that he makes us steadfast on salah and he makes our family members steadfast on salah you need a dua sometimes it's not easy shaitan comes to you let's make dua to allah that allah keeps shaitan away from us when it comes to shaitan listen to what allah says in surah ibrahim regarding ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam he said Rabbi ja'alni muqim as salati Oh Allah, make me from amongst those who establishes his salah. Wa min dhurriyati And even from my whole progeny, not only my children, my children's children and those to come up to the day of Qiyamah, Allah, keep them steadfast on salah. Subhanallah. How many of us make dua for ourselves, our children, and for those from our offspring who are not yet here, whom we, never, whom we may never get to see in our lives. How many of us have made dua for those? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Also, the last point I'd like to mention is, immediately after any act of worship, any dua and prayer that you make thereafter, inshallah, Allah will accept it. And this is why one of the times of the acceptance of dua is immediately after